So, Doug Liman took the reins for the remake of the classic flick Roadhouse, and from the trailer, it seems like it's packed with action that's got potential. Plus, having Jake Gyllenhaal in the mix definitely adds some excitement. We know him. We love him. The man has done movies like Southpaw and Nightcrawler, so we can't doubt him for a second as we know he's got more than enough potential for another hit. But the big question is, was he given enough stuff for the new version to hold up against the old cult favorite? Let's dive in and find out. The script for this revamped Roadhouse was penned by Anthony Baragosi and Chuck Mundry. And with a fresh storyline and a cast featuring big names like Jake Gyllenhaal, Daniela Melchior, and Conor McGregor, yeah, the MMA madman, oh, he was in it. Making his big screen debut, expectations were through the roof. Promising an electrifying performance. Plus, having original director Joel Silver back on board as producer adds to the anticipation. But did this remake capture the same magic and intensity as the original Roadhouse, or did it fall short? Well, if we look at the storyline of the new movie, then it revolves around Elwood Dalton, a troubled former UFC middleweight fighter who finds himself caught in the turbulent underbelly of Glass Key, a town in the Florida Keys. Dalton, who is now making a living via underground scams, is offered a position as head bouncer at The Roadhouse, Frankie's wild establishment. Dalton reluctantly accepts the position, which leads him down a dangerous and intriguing path. As he adjusts to his new role, Dalton meets a variety of individuals including Charlie, a teen girl who manages a bookstore with her father, Stephen. While navigating the bar setting, Dalton finds himself in conflict with nearby criminals and a corrupt sheriff. Along the journey, he connects with Ellie, a doctor, and other Glass Key inhabitants. However, Dalton's past catches up with him as he becomes a target for mob enforcers and faces threats to his life. As tensions rise, secrets emerge and Dalton is forced to face his problems while attempting to protect the people he cares about. The plot progresses through intense action sequences, unexpected alliances, and dramatic confrontations culminating in a final conflict that will decide the fate of Glass Key. It looks like the movie tries to talk about topics such as redemption, loyalty, and the consequences of one's actions. As Dalton confronts his previous and current choices, he must negotiate a dangerous terrain in which trust is limited and danger lurks around every turn. However, the audience is lured into a world where survival is uncertain and the distinction between hero and villain gets blurred. Roadhouse is an exciting and dramatic trip in which Elwood Dalton navigates the hardships of his new life while encountering his past. Well, that's how the story unfolds, and also, I don't want to spoil this one for you, this is why I provided a, a kind of rough plot of the movie. Coming back to the action sequences, some action sequences are really good, but some are just fine. I don't know what they've done with the VFX and the CGI, it, it, it looks bad on screen. Lyman has demonstrated his talent across multiple genres, as his credits include Swingers, Go, and The Edge of Tomorrow. But this film feels more like a director for hire rather than a director with a clear and concise vision of how he wanted to handle the material. Meanwhile, Gyllenhaal's heroic quality is undermined by wild tone shifts, ordinary allies and opponents, over-the-top set pieces, and a mediocre showdown. You're witnessing a leading man give it his all while never receiving enough to work with. If we look back at the original Roadhouse, which served the audience with throat-ripping martial arts scenes and bluesy rock and roll numbers, it received some negative reviews when it first came out in 1989, but it has since grown into a cult favorite. It isn't a masterpiece, or it is, depending on who you talk to, but it's a guilty pleasure nonetheless and it feels less culpable than it should. Thanks in large part to Patrick Swayze's performance. Regardless of how crude and absurd it gets, and it gets goddamn ridiculous, he does Tai Chi on a lake, he carries his medical records with him, he says pain don't hurt, Bigfoot's in the movie, why is Bigfoot in the movie? No one knows. Swayze's sincere and soulful presence indicates that this movie is much more than the sum of its parts. Even its most loyal fans will concede that there is space for growth in terms of plot, character development, and pretty much everything else. So, a remake based on the simple premise of super cool bouncer beats up the bar's most annoying customers does not appear to be a bad idea. Take the protagonist, Elwood Dalton. He has the same surname as Swayze's character, but his new first name is an inside joke based on the Blues Brothers' names Jake and Elwood. As portrayed by an extraordinarily ripped Gyllenhaal, here's an element that appears to be a step up from the original Roadhouse, a hero who has reached rock bottom and desperately needs forgiveness. Nonetheless, the film fails to deliver on the notion. His tragic history is quickly reduced to the status of a trivial rumor. Anyway, he was shown pursued by Frankie, an underutilized Jessica Williams, the proprietor of a club in the Florida Keys that has been terrorized for months by its fighting, bottle-throwing customers. She hires Dalton to clean up the premises but does not reveal the true source of her problems. Her bar is in the same place where a petty villain, Brant, played by Billy Magnuson, plans to build a luxury hotel, even as one of those models that terrible property developers in films always have. 
Once again, this is a unique enhancement, one obvious flaw in the 1989 picture is the bar's tangential relationship to the plot. The evil man is so busy relying on every other business in the area that he barely notices the roadhouse itself. I know you shouldn't expect much coherence from a rollicking action film, and Lyman's films aren't renowned for their tight narrative, but as Roadhouse wanders here and there in an all-too-easy pace, some of the pieces don't really add up. Ellie, played by Daniela Melchior, a lovely local doctor, scolds Dalton for his aggressive behavior before throwing herself at him. Ellie's troubles with her separated father, played by Joaquim de Alemaida, a corrupt sheriff, are addressed but not resolved. Brant's imprisoned father and the goons who provided him money fade into the background. On the other hand, Knox, Brant's father's crazy henchman, is portrayed with exaggerated menace by Conor McGregor, an actual UFC champion. This tattooed Man Mountain, which will be my new nickname, is first shown striding across the streets naked, as flamboyantly evil as a villain from the Fast and the Furious series. Jason Statham and Jason Momoa were huge influences. However, when he eventually enters the pub holding a golf club, his first fight with Dalton simply fizzles away. McGregor is a powerful person, and his single on-screen presence with his main acting concept simply looks like a chaotic ambush. When combined with Dalton's usual I'm harmless grin, it lends uh, the last act a funny aspect of forced enthusiasm. Here they come, the smiling men for a very nasty finish that also made me scream with delight at the ridiculousness of it. It may not be able to reproduce the first film's accidental brilliance and weird undercurrents, but the new Roadhouse is amusing, which is sufficient. But I really feel like it could have used some aid. MMA may be nasty, but it isn't the most natural visual approach to battle, and Roadhouse can't quite mask that by spinning the camera dizzyingly around space and occasionally diving into a POV shot. The fights on bridges and chases on water, as well as the numerous and disarmingly effective bursts of humor, are the most fascinating aspects of the film. Jill and Hall has always been better at oddballs than straight heroes, and the key to Roadhouse's success is that his Dalton is one of the former. When the character is first presented, he is on the underground fight circuit. Roadhouse may not be a cinematic masterpiece, but it does provide a distinct blend of mindless enjoyment and an overcomplicated storyline. While the film's violence, nudity, and profanity seem outdated by current standards, Jake Gyllenhaal's portrayal of Dalton breathes new life into the character, bringing depth and intensity to the battle scenes. However, despite attempting to capture the original's essence, Roadhouse fails to develop its characters and action sequences properly. Finally, while it isn't a must-see picture, it's a guilty pleasure for those looking for some mindless entertainment. If you are a Jake Gyllenhaal fan, then you can watch this, as he looks great in the role of Dalton whereas the other cast also do a good job. But I really don't understand the point of bringing a love story into this kind of movie as it kind of slows down the pace of the film. Well, that's all from my end, peeps. What are your opinions about the movie? Let us know in the comments below. And do you also find the love interest kind of cringy or not? Hit the like button if you like my work and punch that subscribe button for more such reviews. Don't forget to ring the bell icon for regular updates. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one.